for money that they know at a heart level is a bunch of garbage. So there are great companies. There are bottle rockets. Make sure you're looking at something that matches your values if you want to get to 100000 a month. Now, the second thing, in my opinion, if you want to get to 100000 a month, was taught by Harvard for many, many, it still is. If you go, if you get in the Harvard MBA program, if you're lucky enough to get into Harvard, you're going to take a course. You're going to actually get a series of lectures on what they call the billion dollar blueprint. Now, simply put, what Harvard, what a lot of uh, really brilliant marketing experts have done is they've analyzed different billion dollar industries and they have built a, a profile of what companies are most likely going to make it to that magic number of a billion dollars in annualized sales or volume. What the number one of seven things that they teach you at Harvard they call market sector. <clears throat> Here's what they mean. If you're going to get in any industry, especially the distribution industry like ours, you have to make sure that you've got a large enough sector either of your product or your service. Now let me give you an example. All things being equal, you're much better off, in my opinion, doing a company that 100% that of the people in North America use every day as opposed to one where 75% of the people don't use it at all. What you need to ask yourself is this. If you're going to get to $100,000 a month, how big is the market sector, and how much competition do you have within that sector? And I'm just going to tell you right now, the bigger the market sector, the more likelihood your product or service is going to be distributed to more and more and more people, and you're going to get to that magic $100,000 a month uh, figure. Now, those are the only two things that I'm going to say about company selection. But it better match your core values if you want to get to the big money or you'll probably sabotage yourself. And it ought to be a market sector that's big enough that you're in a non-competitive or non-threatening arena where you can actually reach a huge number of people. I see the people all the time. All things being equal, let's say we're, you're looking at two companies. One of them is marketing services or product that is used by everybody, and the other one is marketing products or services used by a tiny fraction of the population, would you rather get into the distribution of a product or, or, or opportunity or uh, anything that you've got to modify people's behavior to get them to use it once, or would you rather get into a profession, into a field, into a market sector where everybody's already conditioned to using what you're trying to sell them? It's a no-brainer as far as I'm concerned. Number three, and this is critical, two hours a day, professional relationship building. Now, listen to me very careful. This is very, very important. I know no exceptions to this. Again, now we're talking about getting to $100,000 a month, and we're talking about doing that in 12 months, so you know it's not going to be easy. You have got to work two hours a day in professional relationship building. Now, what I mean by that? What I mean is, out of 24 hours, you do whatever you want with 22 of them. What I want you to do is I want you to realize that you're only paid to do two things in network marketing. Now, you may be in a different company. You may be in something brand new I've never heard of from you know, Bangladesh or Zimbabwe or some obscure third world country that's just launched a new MLM model I don't even know about. But as far as I know, network marketing pays you to do two things. One, recruit. Two, retail. That's it, period, end of the story. Now, listen to me carefully. Two hours a day, that means you've got to be in the professional relationship. Now, what do I mean by professional? What I mean is... Well, let me, let me make it so that it doesn't appear to be a disparaging comment. When Tiger Woods was as an am, the last year he was an amateur. Tiger Woods didn't make anything. The first year he turned pro, he made $18 million. Now, the question is, what was the difference? He went to the driving ranges often. He, paid, he actually played in one less tournament his first pro year than he did his last amateur year. He didn't make anything as an amateur, but he made $18 million the first year he turned pro. What's the difference? He was professional. He was playing in pro tournaments. Now, if, uh, the difference between an amateur and a professional is 
an amateur doesn't get paid, a professional does. Now, use a little common sense here. If network marketing pays you to do two things, only two, recruit and retail a product or service, then anything else is amateur. That doesn't mean in a disparaging way that you're some kind of amateur. I don't mean it. It's not a put down. It's just that amateurs don't get paid. So here's what I know. If Mark Yarnell is watching Oprah, he's an amateur. If Mark Yarnell is surfing the net, looking at other deals, he's an amateur. If Mark Yarnell is playing pool, he's an amateur. If Mark Yarnell is recruiting or retailing, he's a professional. So listen to me carefully. You want to get to the big, big, big money? Number three, work two hours a day as a professional relationship builder. In other words, do your very best to communicate in some manner with prospects either for your opportunity or the product or service you're selling at least two hours a day. Now, you decide how you want to do it. You know, there are a lot of people on this call who are very, very uh, exceptional at technology communication. They can build professional relationships using the Internet. Great. Two hours a day. Don't be jacking around doing anything else online. Don't be tweeting and Twittering and Facebooking and all that stuff. You just, you got 22 hours to get into your social network and talk about, you know, who did what last weekend at the big party. Two hours a day, you need to get involved in professional relationship building online. If you use the phone, two hours a day, you need to be calling other human beings in another loca location and talking to them about your opportunity or your product or your service. If you do meetings, two hours a day, you better be doing it. If you go walk around and talk to people and hand out DVDs, you better go walking around two hours a day. Here's all I'm asking you to do. Two hours a day, professional relationship building. Use whatever vehicle you want. doesn't matter. But during those two hours, you're focused on only two things, recruiting and retailing. Because, my, ladies and gentlemen, listen to me carefully. That's all you're paid to do. That's all you're paid to do. You're not paid to listen to whining downline people. You're not paid to try to drag losers across the finish line. You're not paid to talk to your upline. You're not paid to sit and listen to CDs about how to build the business. You're not paid to watch, you know, surf the net and look for new deals uh, in, in prospecting. You are paid to recruit and retail. Please do that two hours a day if you want to get to 100000 a month. And the good news is you only got to do that five days a week. And that brings me to point four. You have to decide to get to $100,000 a month whether you're going to follow a one, a two, or a three-year plan. Now, here's the difference. It's all just a numbers game. It sounds easy rolling off my tongue, but it's very hard work. I mean, listen to me carefully. If you're going to do 100000 a month in most companies in one year, you're going to have to talk to 30 people a day, five days a week. We'll just call it a 20-day 20, we'll month. If you're going to do it in two years, you're going to have to build professional relationships with 20 people a day in some capacity. And if you want to do it in three years, you're going to have to do 10 a day. There is no substitute. You can't go down to five a day and do it in four years. That isn't going to work. It's the, the law of diminishing returns. So let's pretend for a moment that you want to get to 100000 a month and you want to do that in one year. That means two hours a day, your objective is to do everything in your power 20 days a month to talk to 30 people. Now, people say, Yarnell, 30 people a day? That's impossible. How, how would I do that? Well, I'm going to get to that in a moment. But basically, all you're doing is driving people to information. You know, there are several steps in this industry. The first one is exposure. You don't want to sell them the farm in the very first conversation. All you, And I'll get to that in a minute when I get to, to point five. But in point four, you've got to remember, if you want to get to $100,000 a month, you've got to talk to 30 people a day, 20 days a month, and I'm going to give you worst-case scenario. That's 600 people. Let's assume 95% of them just don't do squat. They don't sign up. They don't use your service. They don't use your product. And I'm, that's worst-case scenario. In today's world, 
you've got 80 million baby boomers who are broke and hooped, and you've got 85 million generation wires who have no idea what to do except run around on skateboards with, back, with backwards ball caps. They're starving to death. They're wanting a job. They're wanting a profession. There's never been a bigger, a higher percentage of young, aggressive people who deserve to prosper and old, tired people who've played by the rules and are wound up with no 401k in the history of planet Earth. It's never happened in the richest country in the world. So you want to talk to 30 of them a day. You want to drive them to the information, maybe spend two minutes at, at the most, with 30 people. I can talk to 30 people in two hours if I waste time with several of them. So on a 20-day month, that's 600 people. If 570 of them, which 95%, don't do anything, I can promise you 30 of them will. Now, not all of them will become distributors. Some of them will just want your product or they'll just want your service. But a lot of them will become distributors. Now, let's go again. Worst case scenario. That means at the end of the month, you've got 30 people by talking to 600. 570 didn't do anything. Now, now most of you are going to do better than that. I'm giving you worst case scenario to be fair here. Out of that 30, let's say 29 of them quit. What that means is if you do that for 12 months, at the end of the year, you've got 12 frontline winners. It is impossible, or if you're in a binary, 12 winners anywhere. I don't care where you put them. Here's the point. If six of them quit, I've never seen a company with six monsters and great networkers busting it where you'd make under $120,000 a month. I've never seen one. Now, I'm sure there are some comp plans that don't reward you effectively, but on a normal 45 to 55% payout with reasonable levels or reasonable balancing of two legs, whatever the pay plan, if you've got six monster distributors in your organization, it's impossible not to earn that kind of money. But notice what we're, what we're talking about here, and I'm keeping it very, very realistic. You're busting your chops. You're talking to 600 people a month. 95% of them aren't doing anything. Of those who do, 29 out of 30 are quitting. And out of the 12 winners you get, six of them quit. You're still at 100,000 a month. Folks, you can challenge me all you want. I've never seen, never have I seen the opportunity presented to me where a person couldn't do that with six winners anywhere in their organization. So that's number four. You've got to pick a one, two, or three-year plan. If you want to get to 100000 a month in three years, talk to 10 people a day, 20 days a month. You want to do it in two, talk to 20. You want to do it in one, talk to 30. Now, remember what I said earlier. It sounds real easy rolling off my tongue. I'm going to be real straight up with you. It isn't easy. It's the hardest work you'll ever do. I'm telling you, it is not easy to get on the phone or on the Internet or out in the community and have the courage to literally approach and introduce and expose 30 people a day to this business. If you think it is, just go try it. But it all depends on how much money you want to make and how hard you're willing to work. And number five, and this is important, if you are going to get to 100000 a month, you've got to know the landmines. You've got to learn how to recognize the landmines that are going to blow up your career, and you've got to avoid them. Now, I'm going to give you the ten biggest landmines tonight that blow up people's career. Listen to me carefully. Landmine number one I call the comparison bomb. Friends, when somebody talks, to, if you're in a deal and somebody calls you and says, I've got something I want you to look at, I'm in this new deal, you want to hold up a mental bag of garlic and a cross like you're dealing with a dead gum vampire. <laughs> this bu <laughs> I heard the laugh. This business is focus, focus, focus. I have never seen a bomb blow more legs off the careers of people when they're just getting started than the comparison bomb. You don't need to be looking at other deals. You need to be like the gems of the world. You need to be saying, hey, I don't care if it takes me one or two or three or four years. I'm going to the top of this deal, and that means I'm going to focus, focus, focus. I am not going to compare my deal. I've already made a choice. Friends, if you pick a good deal and you're happy with it and you like the service the company's selling and you like the pay plan and you like your, your company and your upline, what would you, why would you waste your time? allowing other people to compare their deal to yours. Forget about other deals. They'll blow you up. Hold up a bag of garlic. Somebody tries to show me a deal, I'm 
they're a vampire. I'm never talking to them. Landmine number two, the multiple stream income bomb. Folks, listen to me carefully. Listen very, very carefully. I know there are celebrity authors out there telling you you've got to diversify and do multiple streams of income. Bunk. You've got to focus. Now, there are situations in which you will be doing one MLM company, and you'll find tools that will allow you to expedite your success, and those tools may have affiliate compensation. There will be times when you'll be in one deal, and you find ways to use other tools to drive your one deal. That's not a multiple stream of income. But if you think you can do three or four legitimate networking deals at the same time, you're nothing but a carnival barker. You're saying to people, hey, if you don't like what I got up this sleeve, let me show you what I got over here. You might as well be running a tilt-a-whirl at the Ozark Empire Fair, toothless. Forget multiple streams of income. The only people that advocate multiple streams of income are people who write books and have never built a downline in network marketing. As far as I'm concerned, it's a goofball proposition. You can only do one, one deal. Don't step on the multiple stream of income bomb. You'll blow your leg off. Number three, the multitasking bomb. Listen to me carefully, folks. We can all, everybody can multitask, but nobody can multifocus. It's impossible. If I ask you to focus on both A and B, you might flip back and forth between A and B fast enough to believe you're doing both. You're not. That's not the way the human brain works. You have got to stop multitasking two hours a day and focus on one thing and one thing only, recruiting and retailing. Now, if you want to multitask and con yourself into thinking you can do two things at once, be my guest 22 hours a day. But the purpose of this call is to get you to $100,000 a month without you blowing up your career in the first year. And if you want to blow up your career, you just try to multitask. You know, I love, I, you know, some of you, this is going to make you mad. I'm going to say it anyway. If all of a sudden a big pen, a blue, let's say that all of a sudden we found out a big pen a blue, only blue. You know those little writing pens people use? Bic pen, the kind you buy, you buy for 80 cents in any store. All of a sudden, the blue Bic pen with blue ink and a blue cap start blowing up and taking out lives. And all of a sudden, you find out in your city, two people yesterday died of a blue Bic pen blow up. And then all of a sudden, a week later, you find out 22 people in your town died from a blue Bic pen blow. How long do you think it would take for the government and your local government to start recalling and getting rid of blue Bic pens? Friends, let me tell you something. Last year in my little tiny province up here in Canada, 1,200 people were maimed permanently because they were trying to drive while they were talking on a cell phone. Now, if it were a big pin blowing up and causing a person to go over the yellow line and, cause, and hit somebody with a head on, they'd be recalling those pins. What do you think they're doing with cell phones up here? Everybody's still using them. Now, why is a cell phone a problem when you're driving? Well, real simple. 159 people died, innocent people, in other cars because people crossed over the yellow line and caused head-ons because nobody can multifocus. You can multitask. I mean, you can put on lipstick and eat your burger and talk on your phone and tweet your friend. You can tweet Larry King while you're driving down the street at 60, and I, I understand Larry loves tweeting. But here's the deal. Too many people are dying. Don't try to multitask in network marketing. Just do one deal two hours a day, and that deal is recruiting and retailing. Number four is the banker bomb. You want to explode your you want to have your business explode before you know what it's you? Loan people the money to buy the starter kit. You know, I, I tell people people are always time asking me, Yarnell, you've made so much money. I'll tell you what. If you'll just finance me in this deal and you'll bring me in, you'll buy the kit, watch my smoke. I'm a genius. I'm great. I've built deals in the, you know, I've been in twenty deals and I've built them all. If you'll just give me the money for a kit, I say, you know what, I made a deal with my banker. I won't loan money if he won't do MLM. We got a deal. So listen to me, folks. 
I've given up $17,000 over my 24-year career. Not one of those people ever made it. Not one of them ever paid me a penny back. I'm not whining. This industry's been real good to me, but I just decided something. I'm going to warn people early on. Forget the banker bomb. It'll blow up. Nobody will give you your money back, and none of them will make it. People value the kid at what they pay for it, which is zero if you loan them money. The fifth bomb I call the product expert bomb. The more technically oriented you become to your product or service, the more you're going to baffle people who you should be trying to get into the business. Let me tell you something. When I was in New Skin. My first guy, I was in New Skin 13 years. Still loved that company with all my heart. You know, I sold my downline, but what a company. Blake Roney, Steve Lund, Craig Bryson, Craig Tilton, Claire McDermott, those people were so fair to me, so honest, so decent. They were always honest. They never screwed around me. But I decided when I got to 60000 a month that I needed to become a product expert. Now, they had a little product that used to stimulate hair growth. It's called Nutriol. So I called over to Italy to the Cuomo you know, to Cuomo, Italy, to Krenos Labs, because I wanted to become, I thought, man, I am brilliant. I'm making so much money. I better learn how this works. And so I learned exactly how it worked. And so I'd stand up in front of a crowd of people, and I'd dazzle them with my product expertise. I'd say, you know, I'd explain to them exactly how Krenos was able to to fractionate the mucopolysaccharides to exactly the right molecular structure so it could penetrate to the very papilla of the hair follicle and stimulate invasive dialect growth. And, and I'd, have, I'd have dermatologists in the audience shaking their head. They didn't know what I was talking about. The more you know about products and services, the more you might think you're dazzling people. You're not. You don't have to be a product or a comp plan expert you did. to work. The more expert you become, the less likely you're going to be spending your time doing what you're paid to do, which is recruit and retail. Now, you need to know something about your product and company, but don't become an expert. That's a bunch of garbage. The sixth bomb is the friends and family bomb. I got news for you. Your friends and family are not a market to be. If you look up the word market in the dictionary, It'll say a group of people to be sold or exploited. Your friends and family are not a group of people to be exploited. They're going to join you in your deal like rats going off a sinking ship when you get your first big check. You don't need to do a Hulk Hogan smackdown on Aunt Mildred the first week. They can't wait to get involved once you start making big money. Most of us can count our close friends and family on two hands and two toes. Two feet. Why run off the people we love the most when they're going to join us as fast as they can when we get to the big money? Save your friends and family for later. Your warm market is people who will warm up to you when they find out you've got something in common with them. So in my case, I just got the list of all the paraglide pilots in North America, 33,000, 32, 33,000 of them. I can't remember now. I never got through half of them before I was making a million a year. So I mean, basically... And I just call them. I'm a paraglide pilot. Hey, it's Mark Yarnell. Hey, Dave, it's Mark Yarnell. I'm a paraglide pilot up here in British Columbia. Are you still flying? Yeah, I am, David said. Wow, that's great. Listen, before we go any further, Dave, I want to know what kind of wing you're flying and all. Uh, grab a pen. I found a way for paraglide pilots to make 50000 a month and fly five days a week. you got to be kidding. I mean, these people didn't reject me. They loved the fact that I was a paraglide pilot like them. I had instant rapport with them, and I bought those names for pennies. So listen to me carefully. Forget the friends and family bomb. Don't step on your – they're not a market to be. Well, you're going to get all them anyway. Don't, don't Hulk Hogan your Aunt Mildred. Number seven is the networking bomb. Forget about meetings where everybody shows up to change cards and switch companies. You know, these network meetings where you go in and – you know, there are 50 people there, and you're going to meet all kinds of people. They're only there for one reason, and, that, and they're there to switch and get your card and try to sue the best salesman. They're going to try to get you in their deal. I've never seen one of those meetings work. Forget about those breakfasts where everybody changes cards, and you get 30 seconds to pitch your deal. Those people are not there to get in your deal. They're there to get you in their deal. Total waste of time. The eighth one is what I call the dabble bomb, the dabble bomb. When you know for sure you've got a dabbler, a part-timer, don't be wasting a bunch of your time. This may be the silliest industry I've ever seen. This may be the only industry in the world where a person can make 100000 a month 
and all they want to do is figure out how to do it without work. You know, I've had people say, Yarnell, I see it. I get it. I, I can't, I'm losing sleep. I'm so excited. What a great industry. Now if I can just figure out how to do it without working. When people want to dabble, I give them to somebody else to dabble. I'm not going to jack around with people who want to dabble. The dabble bomb will blow you up. You're looking for people with enough IQ to go to work to get to the big money. They need money. They need freedom. They need everything you've got. If all they want to do is dabble, forget it. The nine is the dump bomb. Do not dump all your information on a prospect the first time you talk to them. Just expose them to a little bit of information to tweak their enthusiasm. When they come back to you, that's when you do the presentation. The dump bomb will blow you up because people will say, well, that sounds real interesting, Dave. Tell me a little bit about your company. And you're sucked into it, and you start giving them a presentation in the very first approach. You dump the whole farm on them in the first five minutes. Let me tell you what they're going to do. They're going to go home, and they're going to Google your company. They're going to go, aha. I knew it. It's one of those pyramid schemes. I've got an ant with a garage full of soap, and they're gone. So don't dump on them in the very beginning. Just expose them to information that's calculated to get them excited. And then number 10 is the shortcut bomb. If, I, if you hear nothing else I say tonight, please hear this. You heard how Jim eloquently launched this entire webinar tonight. He said, I didn't do squat my first year, my second, my third. And then my fourth, I got to a six-figure income. Now, I'll be honest with you, it took Jim a little longer than it needed to. But I so admire a man of his stature, a guy who will work that hard that many years because he sees the payoff at the end of the tunnel. Friends, there are no shortcuts. This is hard work, 